We are so glad to welcome you to the program today. Dodie and I know that you have a choice. You could be looking at something else, but you chose to watch this program, and we believe God's going to bless you. Could I have an amen? Amen. You know, I heard the program this morning while I was getting dressed for church, and I said, John, you're still my favorite. I'd listen to you if I didn't listen to anybody else. So I'm glad that you teach the Word like it is in a simple way. Let me give, give you a good scripture that'll bless you. It's in the, the Living Bible. It's in Psalm 34. It says, For the eyes of the Lord are intently watching all who live good lives, and He gives attention to them when they cry to Him. Isn't that good? If you're living a good life, and if you're not living a good life now, you can. You can change just yes. by reading the Word of God and getting your instructions there. And then you'll be living a good life, and then He'll give attention when you're crying to amen. Him. Amen. And everybody said amen. amen. Let's hold up our Bibles, and let's make our confession. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I, am I have what it says I have. I, have I can do what it says I can do. I can do Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated and open your Bibles to Mark chapter 13. In chapter 13, verse 33, Jesus said, Take ye heed and watch and pray, for you know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey and left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for you know not when the master of the house cometh at evening or midnight or cockcrowing or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Everybody say watch three times. Watch, watch, watch. Now shout it out. Watch. I want to talk about the, this word from the lips of Jesus when he encourages all of us to watch. You know, the Bible says in so uh, Song of Solomon, uh, chapter 1, verse 6, they made me a keeper of vineyards, but mine own vineyard have I not kept. God gives us responsibility for others, but sometimes we don't watch after our own life. When Paul called the elders of Ephesus down to Miletus and talked to them as believers as well as leaders, his first words were these, take heed to yourselves. You know your life is very important. No man liveth unto himself and no man dieth unto himself, the Bible says. And you know, we need to be careful lest we ourselves become disqualified. Paul said, I keep my body under lest while I have ministered to others, I should be asked to stand aside and be declared disqualified. I don't want Jesus to ask me to stand aside. Could I have an amen? amen. And you know, many people they, in, the, in the battles of life, suddenly they drop out. They drop out of church. They drop out of the Bible. They drop out of living for God. You know, when, uh, when Joseph sent his brothers back, when he revealed himself that he was his brother, sent his brothers back to Jacob, his father, he said, see that you fall not out by the way. You got good news, brothers. Go back and tell my father that Joseph is alive and that he has made, been made Lord over all of Egypt, but don't fall out by the way. Actually, one translation says, don't get in an argument, fussing and fighting among yourselves, and, don't find, and you fail to find your way home with this good news. Well, I encourage all of you, take heed to yourselves. Don't live loose. Don't live nonchalantly. You know, many who used to serve God do not serve Him now. 
I'm talking to multiplied thousands of people who used to serve God, but you fell out by the way. You did not watch your life. You did not, you not, did not watch after your own uh, relationship with God. And now somebody made you mad and some church made you mad and somebody disappointed you and all of that. And, and you got out and you got bitter and you got all this stuff in your heart and you've fallen out. Oh, I tell you, the Bible said, take heed to yourself. You won't die and go to hell alone. You're going to take somebody with you. You don't die alone and you don't live alone. Somebody is watching your life. Could I have an amen? amen? Take heed to yourself. You know, Jesus told the story of the uh, parable of the sower. And he said, the sower soweth the word. And he said, uh, some fell by the wayside. And, and you know, that was the, those that received the word. And the devil comes immediately and steals the word. And then some fell, you know, on stony ground or shallow ground and didn't have much earth. And it just drew, came up for a little while. And then, uh, it, uh, you know, didn't amount to anything. Some on rocky ground and it, uh, it was choked out and didn't amount to anything. And then one fell on good ground. Now, three out of four, Jesus said, will fall out by the way. One, he said, when, the, when they heard the word of God, the devil came immediately and stole the word, so they didn't amount to anything. And then some of them were shallow, didn't have any root, and when they got persecution because of the word, and the world began to make fun of them and all of that, they fell out by the wayside. And then in the thorns, the Bible says, the cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches caused them to fall out. Where are people who used to serve God? Where are they today? Paul said, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. I'm telling you, folks, the Bible said, take heed to yourself. They made me a keeper of vineyards, but mine own vineyard have I not kept. Jesus said, what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Now we're talking to you about watching your own life. You need to watch your own life. You can't just have a careless, don't care attitude. You got to be sober and vigilant. You can't afford to live loose and away from God. You can't afford to get out of church. You can't afford to get away from God. You can't afford uh, to blaspheme his name. You can't afford to go with the world. Watch your life. And I'm going to take that little word, watch. Let's all spell it. Say W. W. A. A T. C. H. Shout watch. watch. That's what we're talking about. Watch. And I'm going to make each one of those little words a point. Number one, the W stands for this. Watch your words. Watch your words. Words are powerful things. They're carriers of power either to destroy or create. Your words have power in them. The Bible's Jesus said, whatsoever things a man shall say, he shall have. The power of death and life is in the tongue. If you have thought evil, lay your hand upon your mouth. Because if you speak it out into words, it will become creative power either to destroy or lift you. Watch your words. And I might say this, watch the words that come your way from the devil. God's healing you and the devil will say the words like this. No, you're not going to make it. No, you're going to die. You'll never be out of debt. You'll never have anything good. Your children will never come to God. Watch words that come towards you. And watch words that people say to you. You know, in college and seminary, words were implanted in my, in my Baptist ears. And I'm telling you, they told me the day of miracles is over. God does not heal. God does not deliver. God does not perform miracles anymore. Healings are not for today. We'll just have to get along the best we can. Those words kept me captive for 19 years. You got to watch your words. Thank God I destroyed those words and drove them out with the word of God. Watch your words, but watch what your mouth says. I'm telling you, folks, you can dig your grave with your tongue and with your lips and with your words. Watch your words if you're going to watch your, uh, watch your life. If you get to talking like this, well, you know all that preacher wants is money. 
I'm not going to that church anymore. Well, I don't have to read my Bible every day. After all, I, I read it once in a while and it's all right. Well, I'm just as good as some of those Christians in the church and those hypocrites down there at the church. Well, I don't believe God wants me to have anything in this life. I'm just, see, those are words that destroy. Well, God doesn't mind me playing around a little bit and cheating on my wife. Oh, you know, so-and-so had two wives. I believe I'm going to get me another one. Oh, my words like that will destroy you. Will destroy you. Watch your words. Speak words of power in the Word of God. Speak words of faith. Speak words that lift you. Agree with God. If you're going to watch your life, you've got to watch your words. Could I have an amen? amen. Number two is A, W, A. That's watch your attitude. If you let your attitude change from a good to a bad attitude, the devil will get a, a, a stranglehold on you and bring you down. Notice what David said about the blessed man. Blessed is that man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night, and he's like a tree planted by the rivers of water. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. But you notice David talked about keeping a right attitude. I walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, stand not in the way of sinners, nor do not see, sit in the seat of the scornful. See, people get scornful. They get bitter. They get, they, they, they get a, a, a sense of, a, 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 in, their, in their spirits, an attitude that's not right, sort of a distrust uh, in their hearts. And, and they live with that. You've got to watch your attitude. What's your attitude toward God and the church and the Bible and your people and your wife or your husband or your children? What's your attitude? I'm telling you, with children, more is caught than taught. What's your attitude? The Bible said, take heed, lest there be any of you a hard heart that comes from the deceitfulness of sin. David said, renew a right spirit within me. See, you've got to watch your attitude. A bad attitude can drive you out and drive others out with you. You got to watch your attitude. T, watch in time of temptation. Everybody say temptation. temptation. You know, all of us are tempted. The young are tempted. The old are tempted. Preachers are tempted. Preachers are tempted to give up. I want you to know that that's never been a temptation to me. I've never wanted to give up. I've never, since God called me to preach, I was so filled with amazement. He called me, I'm sure not going to give up. <laughs> Praise God. I'm telling you, I'm honored. I wouldn't change places with any ruler in the world. But you've got to watch in hours of temptation. You see, when Jesus was hungry, 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 after he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, the devil tempted him in the point of his need. His body was crying out for food. And he said, make these stones to turn into bread. See, it may not be food. It may be that thirst for gambling that you used to have. It may be that thirst for, uh, for uh, illicit sex. It may be that thirst and hunger for drugs and all of that. Where your body system is crying out, the devil will come there at that point of need. Watch in time of temptation. Stand ready and say, no devil, I'm not giving in to you. I'm going to live for God in the name of Jesus. I command you to get out of my life. Yes. Amen. Can I have an amen? amen. You got to watch in hours of temptation. Many people fall. Many people fall. When the devil tempts you to stay home, don't do it. When the devil tempts you not to read your Bible, don't do it. When the devil tries to get you to look at some other man or woman, don't do it. Temptation comes to everybody. Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil walks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Don't give in to temptation. Watch over your life. Many a person, many a person who used to live for God, used to be on fire for God, but today they're out in the shallows. They're not amounting to a hill of beans. They're far, far from God, leading their family out farther from God because they did not watch over their lives. They didn't watch their words. They didn't watch their attitudes, and they didn't watch in the hours of temptation. I'll tell you, we need to be sober. We need to be sober. W-A-T-C, watch your character. Do you know there's 
seemingly less character and integrity today in, in so-called Christians' lives than you could imagine? If your word is not good, then Jesus is not pleased with you. If you leave bills unpaid and try to cheat people out, out, out of their money, then Jesus is not pleased with you. If you lie and cheat, then Jesus is not pleased with you. I don't care how much you call yourself a Christian. I'm telling you, folks, Christians don't do things like that. You got to watch your integrity. Can people trust your word? You know, Abimelech took Sarah into his harem. She was 75 years old and was so attractive that he wanted her in his harem. I said, God, whatever kind of cold cream she used, let Dodie find it. <laughs> but anyway, he took Sarah in. He wanted that 75-year-old woman. Abram had said, well, she's my sister. Well, she was his half-sister. He just half lied. <laughs> and, uh, and so Abimelech took her in to her, his, his harem because of what he said. So that night, God came to him in a dream. Everybody say a dream. And God said to Abimelech, you're a dead man because you've got another man's wife. And Abimelech said, now notice this. This is a very wonderful truth. Abimelech said, God, you know in the integrity, the honesty, and purity of my heart, I took her in to my harem because Abram said she's my sister. Now notice what God said. God said, I know that you did it in the integrity of your heart. And that is the reason I have kept you from touching her. You see, if you have integrity, even if you make a mistake, God will protect you. And we need to develop integrity. If you say you're tithing, tithe. If you say you're going to do something, do it. If you say you're living for God, then live for God. You know what a real hypocrite is? A real hypocrite is not somebody that comes in the church that's lost and acts like a Christian. The real hypocrite is the Christian who goes out into the world and acts like he's not a Christian. Amen. Well, to be open and honest with everybody, have integrity. And then the last is H, watch your household. Did you know if you win everybody in the world which you couldn't do, but if you could, and lose your own household, then you've lost indeed. I know preachers, they run around all over the world and never take care of their own families. My first mission field is my home. I determined long years ago, not one of my children will die lost. Not one of them will be unfruitful in the kingdom of God. I gave myself to my family. You need to watch your household. Some people are so busy making money, running here, running there, climbing the corporate ladder. They don't have time for their families. Listen to me, friends. Listen to me. Your family is the most valuable thing you have. Your children, your wife, your husband, they're worth more than all the gold and silver you could ever get. They're worth more than all the popularity. They're worth more than you being the head of that corporation. What if you become the head and lose them all? Watch your household. Some of you have children out in the, in the world today and you're burdened for them, but I'll tell you, even though you might have failed in days past, you can begin to watch now. You can begin to alert your heart. You can begin to pursue them. You can begin to go after them. You remember when uh, the, the people swept down on, uh, on Abraham's uh, family, and while Abraham was out, uh, they took Lot and all of his household with them? And Abraham, the Bible says, that Abraham gathered his army, trained in his own house, and pursued them. If your family members have been taken by the devil, don't sit and cry about it. Pursue. Go after them. I remember when David was at Ziglag, and they left Ziglag, went out to fight, you know, and, and the Philistines came in there and burned all of Ziglag, took all of the, the army's children and wives and went off with them, took everything. 
And they came back, the city was burned up, and those men in David's army were almost ready to kill him. The Bible said they were going to stone him. It was the lowest moment of David's life. And the Bible said David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And then David inquired of the Lord and said, Shall I pursue? And God said, Pursue. God said, Pursue. So David gathered his army and went after those people that had stolen his wife and all of his children and the rest of them. And the Bible says, David recovered all. Everybody shout all. all. See, God wants you to know you can pursue and, and, and regain and capture all. Whatever the devil has stolen from you, you can get it back again. If he's stolen your children, if he's stolen your wife, if he's stolen your husband, if he's stolen your peace and happiness, pursue and go after them. Watch your household. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy, and thy what? You know, thank God, the first place you ought to start witnessing when you get saved is right in your house. That's where I started, my own household. Now, I had a brother that was a Methodist preacher, but he was long gone and never did come back there to witness to anybody. But, I, but, but as soon as I got saved, I, I began to be interested in my household. You see, one light in a darkened home can make a difference. Does anybody in your household know you're a Christian? What about your extended household? Your brothers, your sisters, your aunts, your uncles, your grandfather, your grandmother. Watch your household. You may be the only light they'll ever get. Ever, everybody say W, w A, 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 A T, T C, C H. H. What does it spell? Watch. I can't hear you. Watch. Say I'm going to watch my words. I'm going to watch my attitude. I'm going to watch in time of temptation. I'm going to watch my character. I'm going to watch over my household. I declare I'm going to stay in the army. I'm going to stay in the family. I'll never go back in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Everybody shout hallelujah. Amen. You know, Many of you have fallen out by the wayside. Maybe because you didn't watch what you said. Maybe it's because you didn't watch your attitudes. You didn't watch in time of temptation. You didn't watch over your household. You didn't watch the things that you should have watched. But today, you turned your television set on to this program in the divine will of God. Don't run away from God, run to Him. God loves you. The Bible says, return unto me and I'll return unto you. Draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh unto you. I believe you're going to draw nigh to him today. Tell him where you've been wrong. Ask him to forgive you and get back in the family of God and serve him with all of your heart. And because you're going to do that, we here at Lakewood Church are going to meet you in heaven.